So this is Teddy. I figure that I introduce her to you guys first. She is the sweetest thing in the whole wide world. Um, right now she's six months old and she is a mini golden doodle. So that's, <laughs> she just tried to eat a bug. Um, but that is part golden retriever and part poodle. But this video is pretty much all about her and her journey back home. So I figured that I would make an introduction. This video is gonna be about how I brought my dog with me back home to Honolulu, Hawaii. If you don't already know, Hawaii has one of the most strictest quarantine laws and that is because we are rabies free. I do want to throw out a disclaimer that I do not work for Hawaii Quarantine nor do I work for the airline. So please do your research as well even after watching this video and please also look at the time this video was made. A lot can happen even in six months and even to a year or more and the rules can change or the time frames can change. So I just wanna make sure that you're gonna be okay and not take what I say completely word for word. First, I would recommend going out and getting your pup their own binder. This will just help you keep you organized. You're gonna have a lot of paperwork and a lot of copies of things. So it's just easier when it's all in one place. This is a checklist that you're gonna to need to read over and over again and just make sure that it's completely ingrained in your head I'm going to be talking about checklist one today because that's from the mainland to Honolulu. There is other checklists if you are going into the outer islands, for instance, like Maui, but we are just going to talk about checklist one. I'm not going to bore you guys and read off this whole checklist. It's very tedious and there is so much going on, but I do recommend that when you use this checklist, be very thorough and go through it. Check out the boxes, fill in any of the lines that you know, are open just so you stay on track and it feels good to know that everything is going to be okay. I'm going to break this video up into a couple subjects just to make it more simple. The first thing that you have to do is get your dog's rabies shots. I got Teddy when she was a puppy at eight weeks old and it could vary where you are but in Seattle none of the vets would do her rabies shot until she was 12 weeks. So we started Teddy off at 12 weeks old with her first rabies shot. You're going to get another rabies shot, but you have to wait 30 days after that. So in total, two rabies shots, 30 days apart. And then 21 days after your second rabies shot, you have to go to the vet and do something called an FABN blood test. The FABN test is pretty simple. You just go to your vet and ask them to draw the blood. And then you can choose which lab you want to send it to. There is three, I believe, that are listed on the checklist. I ended up using Kansas State University. The results typically take three to four weeks. However, with Kansas State University, you can choose to do a stat service and the test itself is 90, around $90. And then if you choose to do the stat service, it's an additional $170. I ended up doing the stat service because I was on a really tight timeline on coming home. So I didn't want to run into any issues and being not able to move around my schedule. If you end up doing stat, you can get the results within one to two weeks instead of three to four weeks. I ended up getting my results within three to four days, so that was really helpful. The doctor can either send it out for you or you can send it out yourself. I ended up sending it out myself because I wanted to make sure that it could get there as soon as possible. Packing the blood sample is pretty simple as well. You start off obviously with a box. You wanna make sure that your blood sample is a tube. You want to make sure your dog's name is on it and the microchip number. And then you want to make sure it's sealed in a Ziploc. You want to also put in an absorbable towel into that Ziploc. And then when you put it in the box, you want to have an ice pack in there. And then if there's any empty space still within the box, you want to fill it with bubble wrap. You can either do overnight shipping or next day air. I ended up using UPS with next day air and it came out to around $80. The 30 day countdown begins the day after your chosen lab gets the results. So you will have to wait at least 30 days. If you end up coming home before those 30 days are done, then your dog will be quarantined for the remainder of those 30 days. And then you also can't wait longer than 36 months. So the time frame is no earlier than 30 days and no later than 36 months, the day after your lab receives your sample. All right, paperwork. 
The documents that I'm talking about right now need to be sent into Hawaii quarantine within 10 days of arrival. And I believe if you don't do that, you will get charged extra for processing fees. This packet needs to include both of your original copies of the rabies vaccination certificates and it needs to be signed in ink by your vet. You also will have to have the dog and import form, which you can find online. And the last thing you need in that packet is either a cashier's check or a money order. On those checks, you have to make sure that you write your, my, your dog or cat's microchip number on the description just so they have reference. Depending on which program you end up choosing for your dog to go into will determine how much you have to pay. I ended up doing direct release, which is no quarantine at all, and I ended up paying $185 for that. Another form that you should have on hand is going to be this FAVN report form. This is something you can get from your vet and this is just the results of the rabies test and you just should have this in your binder just in case. Lastly, within 14 days of arrival, you need to bring this on the airplane with you. So you have to have this in your hands is the health certificate. And it's pretty standard. It's just pretty much the vaccinations they've had, the rabies information, and then you also need to have the vet put a flea and tick medication on your animal. I ended up doing that the same day, so it's on here as well, and that's required to being accepted into Honolulu. All of the documents I have mentioned, I highly recommend that you print extra copies for yourself because the airlines take some, and then Hawaii Quarantine might ask for some, so it's just good to just have it on hand and know that everything's gonna be okay. After doing all of those steps, you're pretty much gonna be clear to go and bypass quarantine. My camera died, but nonetheless, I hope that this video has helped you guys out. I will be linking my journey on the flight and I wish you guys the best.